Get a property for no money down, no interest, and no payments for 24 months OAC. Do I sound like a used car salesman? Because I sure do feel like one all of a sudden. It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it's not actually. If you're someone who is excited about the idea of owning real estate and you'd like to do that without joint venture partners, there is a way that you can make this happen. The most commonly used strategy is what we call a vendor take back or a VTB. This is where a seller of a property will provide you with some or all of the funds required to purchase their property. Why would anyone do this? To answer that question, I sat down with my good friend, Myron Chantra Kumar, to discuss how he has been able to build his real estate portfolio almost exclusively using VTBs. Myron breaks down how he was able to negotiate his first VTB, the term and the rate of that loan, and how he was able to exit that vendor take back and pay out the seller. Stick around until the end of the video where Myron breaks down the numbers on this transaction. You might wanna consider this strategy after you hear what kinds of returns he was able to achieve. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. And now, enjoy the interview. Uh, let's dive right in. Tell me a little bit about how you got started in real estate investing. Yeah, of course. Uh, growing up, I've always loved real estate, just owning it from a traditional standpoint, but more of as a home. Growing up, I was raised with the mindset of pre-construction, just buy and hold, pay off your mortgage, hold it for 30 years, and that's going to be your retirement money. But it comes to a point where you realize that the cost of living doesn't really correlate to the paycheck. So I started looking for a lot of these ways that I can make money and real estate kind of resonated with me so just by chance i ended up buying a property in windsor and it cash flowed 800 bucks a month i was like if i just do this four or five times like i can probably make four thousand dollars a month and as easy as it sounds it's, it's not true yeah so i was like i need to be able to buy more properties but banks were like you need to save money increase your salary but there's only so many times i can increase my salary and at the rate of inflation like how many how much am i actually gonna save mm -hmm. so that's when i just started looking out at other people on social media with they did and my boss at work he used to go to Guelph and he recommended me to check out Keith Byers and actually Darren you were presenting pretty sure I'm not sure if you remembered me for sure introducing myself to yeah. you but I just had a single family at the time but I was just looking for knowledge COVID hit kind of put myself out there joined a lot of these online webinars because there was any there was no meetups and one thing led to another and I just started putting offers on property without none of my own money like without no money in my bank but I was like I'm going to make it work. And so what was the what was the catalyst, I guess, from was it just simply the fact that you didn't necessarily have a lot of money at your disposal? You mentioned kind of, you know, talking right. about, you know, the going to the banks and them saying, well, in order to be able to keep growing your real estate portfolio, you're going to yeah. have to keep increasing your salary. And you just realized that wasn't possible. And is that what kind of switched your mindset to go, OK, I'm going to go out and start to look at doing things with other people's money or using things like mm -hmm. vendor take backs and whatever else of course so i think it was just me as an individual just my character i can never say no to, as a, as an answer so instead of focusing on why i couldn't afford something i started focusing on how now it's just a small mind shift but it takes a lot to even think about that from that perspective now something about myself I did not want to do any joint venture partnerships. It was just something that wasn't for me. I do know a lot of successful people, but at that time, I just wanted to try building a sustainable real estate portfolio with 100% ownership. And I started understanding vendor take back mortgages, how that worked. Like when I first started it, I thought it was a scam. Like <laughs> why would a seller give a buyer money to purchase a property, yeah. right? But that was just the mindset. But you just gotta start proving other people within your community that there's a way to do it. And those that questioned me in the beginning are now a lot of the people that I'm currently coaching or <laughs> helping them get it to that level. Tell me how you got your first vendor take back deal. What was that transaction? What did it look like? Who was the seller? What was the situation? Just explain of a little bit about that. So it took me a lot of practice and those practices were real life examples where it got to my rejection. Mm -hmm. But then I started breaking down why I was being rejected. So the first deal was, it was quite small. So it was a wholesale deal that I had my eye on. It was about 360,000 in Sudbury, um, a duplex. It, the number didn't make sense at that purchase price. So I knew the deal expired, the wholesale deal fell through. And I went back to the wholesaler and I said, this is the price that I wanted. wanted. And I didn't really feel comfortable with him um, going with the vendor take back, but I didn't even knew that a vendor take back was an option at that time. Mm -hmm. So I had it under contract for 330, paid the wholesaler, and I was able to get in contact with the seller. 
just to get an idea in terms of why she's selling. Throughout COVID, she owned a gym, so she lost a lot of money. The tenant wasn't paying rent, mm. and so there's a lot of lost rental income. So those two were the fact, and the third fact was she wanted three hundred and sixty thousand, and I have it for three thirty. So the call was done, and I started thinking, and I'm like, shoot, like what if I were to bump up the price by ten thousand? So I'm giving her more money, and offer her a ten percent BTB in second position, where she'll put in for thirty four thousand. I would put in thirty four thousand, and I went to the credit union that I was working with, and they were like, yeah, like the numbers make sense. So I bought that to her um, attention, and I'm like, hey. I presented the facts and I said that the thirty-four thousand isn't a physical thirty-four thousand, right? It's just on a piece of note. You're secured as a second mortgage on title that is going to be done by your lawyer. I'll have my own separate lawyer. They will be dealing with all the paperwork. And the last option is sorry. The third thing was how are they going to get their money back? Mm -hmm. And I told them about the work that is going to be done on the property. And let's say I do default on those payments. Technically, I'm doing work to those prop to that property that. You're going to be getting a higher value property if I were to default on that on that payment.、Mm. It took a one week. Got she got called me back and she even countered offered at three fifty a BTB at two years and I was like not that's not necessary. So we kind of kept it with the same situation and yeah. So I bought it for three hundred and forty thousand, ten percent. I only put thirty four thousand and I got appraised at for six hundred and fifteen thousand. After about sixty thousand dollars of work, so for me, I always focused on the value. The purchase price wasn't really the benchmark that I was looking at. It was more of the number.、Um, What's the timeline to stabilize the asset?、Mm -hmm. The value once it's stabilized, and the cost of renovation. And the one thing I always tell a lot of people is that a vendor take back is an obligation to the seller. It's not free money, right? And that's a good point you bring up. Like, when do you find that this strategy, like vendor takebacks, works best? Is it in an up market or a flat、right. market or a down market, or do you find that there's it works in all markets? I think each situation will be different. As of right now, it's going to be strictly on value, what the、uh, value would be upon completion, and all comes down to providing an incentive to the seller. How have you been able to find? Because it sounds like you're able to find a lot of great deals, and I know that that's what people are going to wonder: is where are you finding properties, and are you are you doing a lot of off market stuff, or are you finding things?、Right. That are, are you just sifting through the the listings that are existing? A lot of the other properties I've purchased were off market. Now, since I do everything myself、um, with no joint venture partnership, I don't really need that much volume of properties. So if I find one or two every quarter. That's fine for me.、Mm. Uh, a lot of it just wholesale deals. So I bought two wholesale. One I got closing in two weeks.、Uh, I just got a, an email. And the one thing is that once you build the credibility, wholesalers are willing to let properties go at a discount、mm. for the peace of mind.、Mm -hmm. And the other thing is word of mouth. So a lot of、um, agents are willing to give me access to some of their deals before they even list it on the market because. They don't want to go through financing. They don't want to go through multiple properties, walking through、uh, apartment buildings, and it's just trying to build that relationship. When I got started, I actually went to a local bar and I sat down and I asked bartender, like just the bartender, I'm like, "What do you think about this neighborhood?" Because you can ask any real estate agent, "What do you think about the neighborhood?" They're gonna <laughs> no, be like, gonna "Amazing!" Say, it's, like, it's the best neighborhood ever. <laughs> this is the best neighborhood, right? Like, I never ask an agent, "What do you think of this neighborhood?"、No. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna ask people who have no biased opinion.、Mm -hmm. So that's how I continue to grow, and as I continue to make relationships, that's where I got a lot of my opportunities. And as long as I get one or two every quarter, that's for me. That's more than enough. Wow, that interview was packed with so much great information. The thing that I love about vendor takebacks is that it allows investors who have a limited amount of cash an opportunity to get into real estate investing. Using VTBs is just one of five key strategies that you should be using if you don't have a lot of money to invest in real estate or you want to use other people's money. To learn more about the other four strategies, check out my website at darrenvoros.com as I have an entire course dedicated to those of you that fit this situation. As always, if you have questions for me, leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.